Mm -hmm. Hi there, my name is Sebastian from Clearlight Saunas and I want to show you what it involves to put the heater kit of ours into a sauna and what components there are. Basically, what it is all about is these heaters and in a normal sauna, in a typical sauna, there are at least eight heaters that sit all around the person. So there would be a couple on the side, a couple on the back, a couple on the other side and in the front as well. They're always in a wooden frame, so they always get delivered with a wooden frame, which this will happen shortly as well. So there's a wooden frame that goes around it, which makes it really easy to mount, because all you have to do is basically put two screws in the top, two screws in the bottom, and the, the heater is, is, is snug. It sits on just on any wall. It doesn't have to be, um, it's, it's not a sunken in heater, it's just sitting right on the wall. And it gets connected by just uh, 20, 20, a 2000 no 220 volt uh, cable and this is this is the heater so the heater is really really simple it just has this cable it has a temperature relay that will switch off at around uh, 65 degrees uh, maximum or 70 degrees so um, it doesn't get hot enough to to be a, a fire hazard I believe um, and um, it will have a little bit of a temperature insulation on the back as well when, when you mount it. So these are waterproof heaters and this connector needs to go into the power box and this is the power box here and when you open it it has a, it has a diagram on it and a couple of components that I will just quickly compare, uh, explain. So the power, there are two circuits in here and one circuit is normally enough. This is a, a 4800 watts for each circuit so in total you have uh, a 9600 watt one but if you just use one power plug so we have just you know uh, sh showing this here for one circuit it goes in here 220 volt just normal you, you add, add um, draws the power from a normal power plug it goes in here and then the the heaters are connected on this side and basically all can go onto one circuit um, if they are below 4800 watts so you just connect them here uh, with each cable and that's the cabling done. There is also this, this uh, temperature sensor here which goes on the top of the roof in, a, in the sauna and that will detect whether the, the temperature is uh, above the, the point that the customer, has, the user has, has adjusted it. And the way the user does that is um, we have here this um, this normal network cable that also connects to the to the power source, and um, you just connect that here, here, and you have the the power power or the, the whole control panel for for the temperature and the timer. So all this does is you would press power, and you will adjust the temperature, which checks here that it is below it, and as long as it's below it, it will power those heaters. The heaters will just run. On, on, the, um, on the maximum temperature the whole time until it reaches the temperature that is set. And at that moment, um, the switch switches off the, uh, the, the heaters as long as the temperature is high enough. Once the temperature drops, this will switch on the heaters again. There's a timer to it, so maximum at 60, 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, it automatically switches off the, the whole unit as well. And you can increase the timer just by go up. Those heaters are made for a use of at least 30,000 hours, so it lasts a, lot, it's a long time, they're really heavy duty. The, they can run all day long without any issues of overheating or anything like that. The, there are some additional components that some customers use, um, which is um, they also have 12 volt light switches built into it. It's an optional thing that people don't have to necessarily use if they don't want to. So, as you can see, this is a really easy connector just by a network cable which controls this unit. This unit can be controlled by Wi-Fi and by, by, by an app as well if you wanted to through your smartphone. This is the temperature sensor that needs to be going onto the roof. These are the heaters that need to be connected to this. And this is the power cord that needs to be connected to a circuit and um, it doesn't have to be even um, a dedicated circuit. The main main concern that we have and where we really need um, a certified certified electrician to is um, to sign this off and uh, one one area where we wouldn't be so sure is like would these be um would these connectors need to have um, a box a connector box 
blocks before they go into this or can we connect them all in here and how would we cover these these cables uh, coming from the, the heater to the power box what we normally do in the states and we have installed thousands of these is that we have um, a little just wooden bit going over over the top of these of these um, cables they don't get hot so there, there's no, no fire hazard there in terms of the temperature that they reach but there might be building code to follow so that's that's probably the main thing following the code we have a lot of private people installing that themselves without any issues but when we assist a customer like we do um, for, for, for commercial applications at that moment we do need to get it signed off and uh, yeah that would be um, wonderful if you could assist us with this I think this is it. If you have any questions in particular, let me know. I can send a picture of, of the drawings here as well of, of the switchboard. But overall, power comes in, power goes out. That's the main thing. It's regulated by a temperature sensor and controlled by a control panel. That's, that's the main thing. Awesome. Thank you very much and uh, hope to talk to you soon. Bye for now.